Hey, g'day mates, Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching. Welcome back to another Whiteboard Wednesday. In today, we're going to jump into the second video of our Energy Systems series, and we're going to be talking about the anaerobic ATP PCR Energy Systems. Let's get into it. G'day mate, welcome back to another Whiteboard Wednesday. In today's episode, we are going to be digging into the first of our energy systems in this energy systems series. The first energy system we're going to be covering is the ATP PCR energy system, or as it's sometimes known, the anaerobic alactic system. Now this energy system is responsible for all of our fast movements, uh, but it also initiates all of our movements as well. And what that allows us to do is to move instantly without the reliance of oxygen. Once we get moving, our other energy systems kick into, in, into gear, so to speak, and we, and we move through into those more sustainable energy systems. But this instantaneous energy system allows us to spring into life, move if we need to. There's kind of two components of it. And I find that a lot of people get confused about the ATP PCR energy system. So what I want to do today is try and break it down a little bit and hopefully explain it in a way that you can that you can grasp. Now just remember, none of our energy systems work independently of each other. And I like the analogy of three pots simmering on a stovetop. And then what we do is we just dial up the heat on a different pot depending on what we're trying to cook so to speak and hopefully that becomes a little bit clearer as we move through things but there's a dependency between the energy systems so ATP PCR energy system there's kind of two components of it and that's why I've got this dashed line down the middle of the board here to try and hopefully get that concept over to you first of all we've got what's happening in the muscle the ATP storage if you remember back to our last video, there's a small amount of ATP stored in the muscle. About two to three seconds depending on who you are and your training status. So this ATP, if we remember this molecular makeup here, this ATP can be used instantly. So what happens is ATPase, this here cleaves off this end phosphate molecule. And so this phosphate molecule now is floating free. In that process, energy over here, this big lightning arrow, energy is released. Okay, that is energy for movement, for digestion, for neural stimulus, whatever it might be. And in the process, we are left with an ADP and a free phosphate molecule because this guy here is now floating around. So that is the first instantaneous energy that we get. We've got enough energy to do that for about two to three seconds of movement. After that, the ATP runs out. So what we need to do is we need a bit of a reservoir. And this is what the PCR aspect over here does. It acts as a bit of a reservoir to resupply this so that this process can happen a few more times. So what we do is we take this ADP over here and we come over to this side. And what we do is if we get an ADP molecule, which remember is just an ATP, adenosine triphosphate, but with this molecule gone, this phosphate molecule. So now there's the adenosine aspect and then two phosphate molecules, adenosine diphosphate. So we've got our adenosine diphosphate over here. If we couple that with phosphocreatine or PCR, using creatine kinase to help this reaction along, what actually happens is we produce another ATP molecule, which is pretty cool. So we're left with ATP molecule over here and a free creatine floating around in the system. So this here gives us some more energy and this process here 
can happen again. So the ATP, cleave off one of those phosphate molecules, boom, more energy is released. And what this allows us to do is extend out our movement time to about 10 seconds of high intensity movement. We can increase the capacity with supplementation. If we have a look at PCR, if we have more PCR floating around in our system, then we have more PCR to pick up the ADP molecules and turn them back into ATP. And we can do that by consuming creatine. Okay, and some of you are probably quite familiar with creatine supplementation. The other way we can do this is that we can take two ADP molecules and with the help of adenylate kinase, we're able to actually make another ATP molecule as well. And then that feeds back over here and we're able to get that system happening again. So this allows us about 10 seconds of energy. We've got about 2 to 3 seconds stored in the muscle. When that runs out, we dip into this reservoir over here and it allows that high intensity uh, exercise intensity to be maintained out to about 10 seconds. Now the really cool part of this is the whole systems integrate with each other. As the products AMP, which is released over here after this, reaction happens, phosphate, which you can see is released over here when this reaction happens, and ADP, again, released over here when this reaction happens, these all activate the breakdown of glycogen and glucose to mobilize them for our next energy system to kick into gear our anaerobic glycolytic energy system because if there's a lot of work happening then our body knows that we're going to need to repay this energy deficit so we better spark up our next energy system which is our anaerobic glycolytic energy system and the byproducts of this energy system kick this next one into gear and that's what we're going to talk about in our next video if you've got any questions about the ATP PCR energy system fire them through and I'll do my best to answer them. I hope that helped.